Hi, it's Brad Shores with Tropical Shores Steel Drum Lessons. On today's lessons, we're going to talk about things like chord structure, comping, and uh, triads, and how to build a chord out of a major scale. A lot of people ask this question about what are these people talking about chords and comping and all these strange terms, and how do you know what chords are made of and how do you build it? Well, we're going to try to talk a little bit about that, especially where the pan is involved. But first, we have to talk about uh, key signatures, and let's today let's assume that we're in the key of C. And if you looked over at the at the key signature in any piece of music and you didn't see any sharps or flats, then you'd know you're in the key of C. So let's just start there. We'll do an easy. There's no sharps or flats in this key. So what I did was I drew out the the sequence of the scale C D E F G A B C. That's what those are the letters we have to work with in this order. So what I did was I went up and wrote over and over and over. So you can see. We're going to make a triad, triad meaning three, three notes to make a chord. A chord is made up of three notes, it's a triad, three triad. So how do you know how to make that? Well, here's, how, here's the formula. I took the first note and I go C, E, and G. And for, for, my, for my perspective, I like to say the first, second, third, and fifth note in that, in that little sequence. And that, that, that little sequence is very important to remember one, three, and five. I took the first and the third and the fifth note, and that's a C, and that's a chord, a triad. That's a C triad, C E G, C major triad. Now, if I wanted to do the next one, I'll do the same thing. I'll go D. There's the one. The D becomes the one now. D. There's the three. There's the five. Now I have D F A, and you do that for every note. You go to every note and you do the one, three, and the five. The note that you start on now is the the first of the one, three, five. One, two, three, four, five. Let's do the G. G, there's the one, two, three, four, and five. So every chord has a one, three, and a five, depending on which, which note it is. <clears throat> it's important to me to draw out the scale over and over and over so you can see that this just repeats. It goes over, uh, starts at C, there's the C again, it just keeps repeating. So what I have done now is made the chords for every note in that scale. I've done the one, three, five for every note in the scale. And you can see how they're spelled. We call that spelling them. C-E-G, D-F-A, E-G-B, and so on and so forth. So these now make up the chords of whatever song you're playing. And uh, <clears throat> the chords are also called triads, but sometimes chords have four notes in it. That's another video. But today we're talking about the triads. Comping is just what you do. If you're not playing the melody, then, and you want to still play with somebody else in the band, let's say a saxophone player is taking a solo, and you want to play, but you don't want to play the melody, and it's not your turn to do improvisation, you could do comping. You're going to play the chords in the background because you're not the lead solos. Let's, uh, let's do comping on C. Well, I'm going to take these three notes. I can take any of those and play them in any combination, but being as I only have two mallets, I have to pick and choose a little bit. So I might go, let's say we're doing a bossa nova about this fast. One, two, three, four. I'm comping the chord C, E, G. I'm comping that, meaning I'm playing some pattern. The pattern is up to you. I could have done... pattern would work. Even four quarter notes is better than nothing. Notice I play two, I try to get all those chords in there. If I had more mallets, I could play them all together, but let's pretend I'm doing that. I'm going to go to the DFA chord now. DFA. EGB. Or a different pattern that works. I would add right here, if you're comping, you want to stay out of the range. Let's say a saxophone player is playing. I don't want to play my higher notes. I want to stay as low as I can, low on the pan. I want to stay with um, low notes because I don't want to get into his range because then it would be confusing. So you want to stay in the background. Comping says, I'm not soloing, I'm just kind of supporting. So you don't want to cover them up. That's why using lower notes is probably better, meaning I'm going to try to find the E, G, and the B. I don't have any choice there, but uh, F, A, C, I'm going to try to find the F and the A, and I'm going to use the low C because it's lower and it'll, it'll be less uh, obvious. I could play the other one, but now I'm getting into the higher range. I don't want to really be heard that well. I'm just comping, comping the staying in the background. Uh, so this would be comping in the key of C. Let's say that uh, this song has some of, it may not have all of these chords, it might have several. It might have a C, it might have an F and a G chord. Rarely do they have all of them in one song, but you pick, you pick out the notes that you want to play. And remember, the bass player is always playing the lowest. He's always playing the one. 
he's playing the one of the three and the five. He always plays the one. So you keep that in mind that, you know, you don't have to double the bass player. If you can, try to stay away from the bass player's notes. Like he, he's always playing the bottom of them. So you try to stay on the up, upper two. F A, G B, F A, or A C. That takes a little bit more thought. And comping also takes practice. And you, you have to decide what style are we playing. Are we playing a swing style? Are we playing reggae? One, two, reggae, and. Uh. That's comping in, in, uh, in reggae style. Usually the guitar player would play that, but sometimes there is no guitar player and you're filling that role. So learning to play in those kinds of styles takes practice and it also takes listening. If somebody says, hey, we're going to play a reggae song, if you've heard what reggae sounds like, then you'll know what your comping is supposed to sound like. Sometimes you just have to do the best you can, just lay down some chords. But listening to the types of music, bossa novas, uh, calypsos, things that steel drum people play, also helps you decide what should I be comping, what, what's the style I'm going to be comping. Because usually the comping is up to you. There's no, uh, there's no manual for that. You decide what sounds best with that. You don't play a bossa comp with a jazz style. It just doesn't work. So knowing the style takes a little bit of, of practice, but research the song that you want to play and say, okay, it's, it's, a, it's a bossa nova, then I'm going to comp in a bossa nova style. What are the chords? Well, there's C, E, G, F, A, C, and G, B, D. So you start comping in that style. Remember, this is not the melody, it's background. So you try to stay in the background, but that gives you a little bit of idea of if, if I had to, how could I build a chord on these particular uh, notes of the scale? The other part of that, which is another video, is how do you understand what, what key we're in? What does key mean? Well, that, that's, that's a whole other video. But if you know this much, you can kind of start to put chords together, start practicing uh, patterns, and learn your way around uh, the world of comping and doing triads. Well, that's it for this time. I want to thank you for watching the videos. I want to encourage you to go to panland.name.com and join that. Uh, it is a social site for pan players. There's videos, downloadable music on there sometimes, and uh, forums, people's opinions, and, and what people are doing all over the world. Also, I want you to go to uh, tropicalshores.net for any of your book needs or sheet music needs. Thanks again for watching. See you next time.